What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and can you believe it? Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are mere days away from being released, and we will soon be able to experience an all new adventure in the Alola region. In order to celebrate these games release and capture the excitement of it all, I'm going to be doing Ultra Sun and Moon and Gen 7 videos all throughout November, and probably a little bit into December as well once the games are released. And frankly, if we're talking about Gen 7, we kinda have to mention the Ultra Beasts. They're easily one of, if not the biggest new feature to come out of this generation, and we've even got three new ones announced so far for Ultra Sun and Moon, which is unprecedented for a mid-generation game like these. So, since the Ultra Beasts are so important to these games, I thought I would go ahead and highlight them, however, instead of highlighting the ones that we already know of, I thought it would be cool to count down the top 5 fan-made Ultra Beasts. We have some amazingly talented and creative artists in the Pokemon community that have come up with some great designs for new Ultra Beasts, and I thought it would be really fun to highlight this creativity with a top 5 list. Now of course this is my own opinion, and of course all of the artists will be linked in the description, so without further ado, let's check it out. Now kicking things off on this list we have UB10 Caretaker, also known as Matora. What I personally like about this Ultra Beast is that it has a great look to it, while at the same time having a great concept behind it. If Matora looks a little familiar, it's because it's actually based on Toriel from Undertale, which is an awesome inspiration to have. On top of that, it actually pulls this off really well, looking just enough like Toriel to reveal its inspiration, but not so identical that it just appears like a blatant ripoff. It also gets the Fire Fairy typing, which I really like, and just like Toriel, its instincts are to protect lost children, which is a refreshing take on the normally hostile Ultra Beasts. Honestly, every single feature of this Ultra Beast is really well thought out, and Locomotive 111, the artist of this UB, did a fantastic job designing it. Okay, next up at number 4 is this big ol' ball of fur, UB07 Remnant, also known as Gauntress. Now to me, this Fakemon just nails down the look of an Ultra Beast perfectly. It's weird looking, you can barely tell where its face is, and it looks really mischievous. The concept of this Fakemon is also really creative, as according to Smiley Fakemon, the artist of this Ultra Beast, Gontris is a creature almost completely composed of keratin, which is a protein that comprises the horns of some mammals, such as the Impala, and it has been seen eating Pokemon fur, which you might have been able to guess considering it's a giant furball. And just to add the cherry to the top of this sweet design, it's also Ghost Normal Type, which is not only an amazing typing, but it's also a unique one that we have never seen before, and I personally would love to see something like this in Ultra Sun and Moon. At number 3 we have another Ultra Beast by Locomotive 111, and that would be UB06 Monk, better known as Zentwig. Now of all the Ultra Beasts on this list, this one in my opinion probably looks the most like it could be an actual Ultra Beast, because the design is just amazing. Locomotive really nailed down that innate quality that makes Ultra Beasts so unique, and he captured it absolutely perfectly with this design. Another thing that's interesting about Zentwig is that it's actually a rather insightful Ultra Beast. According to its dex entry, it is exceptionally peaceful and has been known to engage in surprisingly insightful discussion with passing humans. Now if Zentwig can actually have a spoken dialogue type of conversation with humans, that puts it in a special category that even a super smart Pokemon like Alakazam can't even match. Also, as with UB10 Caretaker, I like how this Ultra Beast has a different, more unique personality than the standard hostile nature of the Ultra Beasts, and I think a little bit of this type of variety would make the Ultra Beasts just that much more interesting. Finally, it is a bug psychic type, just wanted to throw that out there, pretty awesome. In at number 2 we have another one from Smiley, and that would be UB06 Glass, also known as Vitrior. Just like the other picks on this list, Smiley does an awesome job of capturing the look and feel of an Ultra Beast with this design because it actually reminds me a lot of Nihilego. On top of that, Vitriorb also has an Ice Fire typing, which is probably the coolest typing ever that hasn't been used yet, and its Pokedex entry states that researchers believe it drastically increases its temperature and pressure levels when on the offensive. As it cools down again, its body becomes incredibly fragile. I think this is a really cool way to explain the ice fire typing, because in most situations it would be kind of difficult to explain why a Pokemon is two types that are the exact opposite of each other. 
Smiley did a phenomenal job with this one, and it definitely deserves the number two spot. And finally, at the number one spot, we have another one from Locomotive 111, cause this guy just really knows what he's doing with his Fakemon designs. This one in particular really piques my interest because it's another ice cream Pokemon, UB13 Saccharine, also known as Sorbet. But instead of the regular spelling, it's spelled with a PS cause it's a psychic ice type, so it's, t it's totally legit, don't worry about it. The reason why I like this one so much is because it essentially shows the difference in development between the Pokemon of our world and the Pokemon of Ultra Space. On the one hand, we have the Vanillix family that, aside from looking like straight up ice cream cones, look pretty natural. Then on the other hand, we have Sorbet, which has a very, you guessed it, alien look to it and is essentially the Ultra Beast version of Vanillux. To me, this kind of relationship between the two types of Pokemon is fascinating because it shows that they definitely do have similarities, but their evolutionary process was also very different, and I think adding this little wrinkle into a Pokemon design makes it astronomically more interesting. And that's why it's my favorite fan-made Ultra Beast on the internet. And there we have it. I absolutely love looking at fan-made Pokemon creations because we have so many fans in this community that are so unbelievably talented, and I wanted to show off this awesome work that they have done while also giving them the credit they deserve. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like as always and subscribe if you're new because I will have a lot more Ultra Sun and Moon content on the way as we enter into this launch window for the games. Finally, I just want to say, as this is the first video I've scripted since this happened, thank you all so, so much for 50,000 subscribers. Getting to 100,000 subscribers has been my ultimate dream, and we are officially halfway there, which is huge. So I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart, and I hope you'll stick with me as we continue to approach 100,000. Anyways, though, I will be back with another video for you guys very soon, and until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.